let me just pick up uh, with a couple examples on where we were. So we finished last time proving the, um, finishing with the sketch of the proof of the Ma, Yanger and Ma um, about characterizing regularity in terms of faithfully flat maps to perfectoid rings. And now we have uh, gone through all the definitions and really started to build up the theory of what perfectoid ring is. So um, just to have some examples fresh in your mind, um, most of these we've, at least the first couple we've talked about already before again, right? So we have these easy examples, right? Um, the p-addicts join the pth roots of p, hat p. I can do the same thing where I join roots and variables as well. Um, and my exercise for you is now that you have all the definitions to go through, compute the flats of all of these things and actually try to check uh, that they satisfy their various equivalences, right? Um, this one will be useful for us later on in a second. So, um, uh, or came up in our proof, right? Um, so here, take a regular ring, a complete regular local ring in mixed characteristics, say, um, uh, where the coefficient field is the width vectors of our perfect field, right? Adjoin all the roots of p and all the variables again, and then hat p, right? So that's something which is very similar to the example up above here, right? And so let me give you two other examples, right, to think about to sort of jumpstart what we're going to do today. So the first one, right? So uh, take any complete local domain of uh, either characteristic p or mixed characteristic, so p inside the maximal ideal, right? And let's assume that the residue field is perfect, k equals k to the p. This showed up in the earlier talks as well, but let R plus be the absolute integral closure of R. So the integral closure of R inside of a fraction, the an algebraic closure of its fraction field, okay? And uh, one can check that R plus hat P, right, um, is perfectoid. So of course, if uh, um, R is characteristic P here, then um, I don't have to do this hat P at all, and I just get R plus, but if you're in mixed characteristic, you have to add this down. Okay, and um, the exercise for you to check um, is, uh, you know, in the definition here, um, you want to check that the kernel of Frobenius is generated by the pth root of p, right, in mixed characteristic, okay? Um, so, um, and then sort of just as a last example, right, so um, let's say that A is perfectoid and I happen to have a whole bunch of elements that admit a system of p power roots for all powers, okay? Um, then what I want you to do is take A and kill, we've seen this, these ideals earlier in the perfect case, but I want you to think about this also in mixed characteristic, kill that ideal, right? When you do so, um, uh, what you'll get may not be p-adically separated, so you will still have to do a p-completion to, to satisfy that. Right, but then after you do, what you get is perfectoid again, okay? All right, so um, uh, more generally, right, so um, as you've seen uh, sort of already in the theorems, uh, part of the, the game that you want to play here is to find as many ways to construct these perfectoid rings as you can, all right? Um, and when you can do so in some nice way, um, often you get theorems coming out of those. So um, with that, um, uh, part of what I want to do today is essentially sketch for you a bunch of packages of how to produce um, perfectoid rings with certain properties, all right, that, that sort of uh, show how they're used in the study of singularities. All right, so to that effect, let me start off by quoting a result for you. Right, so of um, Bott and Schultz, uh, let's, say you, let's say you found a perfectoid ring, okay? Um, and I give you a map to, so give you an R algebra S, where this is P complete. And one of two things holds, either, um, uh, S here is finitely presented. Or, um, let's say S is integral over R. Well, at least up to P completion.
right? So just like in this example over here, right? Um, so you want S to be the peak completion of something which is either a finitely presented algebra or an integral, integral map, okay? Um, in this case, um, there exists, so the conclusion of the theorem, right, is that there exists a unique ring, call it S perf, or the perfect organization of S, right, which is the smallest perfectoid ring over S, i.e., um, um, it's universal for maps from S to perfectoids. So maybe we draw it, draw it in a diagram, right? So it comes for free with a map from S. And if I give you any other um, S algebra that happens to be perfectoid, right? There exists a unique um, unique arrow making the, di the triangle commute, right? So there's a unique smallest perfectoid, right? Is everyone happy with the statement of this? Really unique. It's really uh, over S. I think it's, well, unique up to the map. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, it's um, really unique. All right, so um, now uh, it's unique, uh, again, Assuming you've started off and you've found a perfectoid to begin with, okay? Okay, so I couldn't have started with uh, some, some local ring. I really had to do a bunch of modifications before I got this, okay? All right, so just a couple of remarks. All right, so well, the first is just like in that last example, somehow over there, if our to S is surjective, well, if R is perfectoid, then its perfectoidization is itself, and the conclusion of the remark is that R perfed surjects onto S perfed. So what you end up with is a quotient of R. Okay. Um, and, all right, two, all right, so. Oh, if S is, right. If uh, S happens to be P torsion free, right, then so is S perfed, right? It's not so easy to show or get your hands on what these things are, right? So, um, and. Maybe it's not so easy to give attributions also for where all the various properties are going to show up in the rest of my talks. So please ping me if you would like more references. But this one shows up um, in an appendix of uh, a paper of mine with a bunch of co-authors. So Ling Shun Ma, Carl Schwed, um, Joe Waldron, Waldron, and Jakob Wittacek. All right. So. Um, as the notation would suggest, right, so here you might say, well, in my theorem, I assumed I took things that were over S over here, or over R, right? So, but then my notation S perf doesn't make any reference to R. So, um, but and Schultz also prove that um, what you get, this S perf is independent of R, meaning, right, so, um, so long as you know that S admits a map from some perfectoid ring, the perfs you get are all the same, right? So it really doesn't really depend on the base ring, right? Um, and maybe the last thing to say is that more generally, without either one or two, Right, um, Bott and Schulze. Right, so formulate um, Right, 
right? So you use um, uh, derived prismatic cohomology to formulate a notion of s perfed um, as a derived ring, right? Um, so some complex, right, over s. So um, in some sense, the, the point of the setting over here without getting into a lot of technical details is, is that this is a case where you can check that that complex um, is discrete, is really concentrated in degree zero, and so gives me an honest ring, right? And not some more complicated homological ob object. Okay? Right? Okay. Okay, so, um, so in some sense, uh, part of this is to, we'll use this, this perf functor uh, later on, right? So, but um, uh, gives me a way to construct a bunch of perfectoids. And we'll see some more, right? So um, uh, what I want to sketch for you today, right? So or tell you a little bit about right so. And a lot of my theorems that I'll write going forward, I'm trying to combine as many results from people all into one nice formulation, right? So um, it says the following. Let's say I have a local map of complete local domains. So then, well, I can map R and S to their absolute, um, you know, closures, R plus and S plus, and then I can map each of those further to rings B and C so that all of these diagrams commute, right, in such a way that B and C are um, in such a way that B and C respectively are BCM R algebras and S algebras. All right, so maybe just the shorthand, um, whenever I want to say that B is a BCM R algebra that dominates R plus, I'll just write uh, um, BCM R plus algebra, meaning that it's BCM over R. Okay? And um, the contribution of some of the other people are, um, well, right, so um, Andre Geber and Bott, right, can even take, right, Um, B to be the piatic completion of R plus and C to be the piatic completion of S plus, right? So in some, uh, right, so this, this is a big theorem here. So this is saying that given a complete local domain, RMK, there exists a uh, um, big Comacaulay R plus algebra and that construction can be done functor or weakly functorially over, over the map R to S, okay? All right, so, um, um, Great, so uh, in particular, the first thing I want to sketch for you over here today, right? Right, so um, is Andre's result really is, well, Hoxer and Hunicke proved in characteristic P, right? And if you were at the summer school and looked at the lectures last summer, right? That certainly R plus is big Comacaulay over R in positive characteristic, right? So the, sort of that's their contribution to this theorem, right? Andre used these perfectoid methods to um, show the existence of big Comacaulay algebras, right, in, in mixed characteristic zero P, 
All right? And that's the, what I want to tell you a little bit more about today. Okay? But before I do that, are there any questions or any, uh, anything you'd like to ask about the statement of the theorem here? So, so I want to sketch for you um, the essential ingredients of sort of our current perspective on Andre's proof. Right? And really, um, but before I do that, let me say maybe a little word about uh, what big Kamakoli means. So let's say you have a, a big R module M, right? So big meaning possibly not finitely generated. And let's assume that M is not equal to little m times M, right? Then um, uh, what I mean by BCM is balanced big Kolmogorov algebra. So all system parameters are regular sequences. All right. Of course, um, if all system parameters are regular sequences, then that implies that some system of parameters is a regular sequence. So you might also talk about being uh, Komakali or Komakali, big Komakali with respect to another fixed system of parameters. And that implies something which is um, I, um, a priori even weaker, namely that if I look at local cohomology, right, so um, then the local cohomology modules vanish for i less than in r because I can use any fixed system of parameters to compute the local cohomology modules. All right. Um, in most cases, for a lot of the modern proofs, the weakest notion of these um, will work uh, to make things go forward. Um, but historically, this is the one maybe that is most useful to keep in mind. Right? And sort of to relate all of them, there is an implication back the other way. Right? Um, if, uh, if the module is complete, right? So if the module you have is complete, right? So meaning here, emmatically complete, right? Then all of these notions in big Komakali are the same thing, right? So in practice, what often happens is you can produce something that, say, satisfies the local cohomology criterion here, right? And you then need to emmatically complete to get a big Kolmogorov algebra. All right. So, all right. So, as I said, I want to give some kind of a, a sketch of uh, of the proof, at least of the existence of big Kolmogorov um, uh, R algebras. Right. So, um, at least sort of sketch Andre's proof. And to do that. Um, The key ingredients, what Andre really figured out how to do um, here and that no one else had figured out before is the following. So he says the following. Say you have a perfect perfectoid ring, right, and you have some element, right, then his lemma says that there exists um, a map to another ring A prime where this A prime is still perfectoid. The corresponding map is faithfully flat. Well, okay. 
modulo any power of p, right? So, um, and in such a way, right? I'll write it like this, in such a way that your fixed element g admits a system of compatible p power roots inside of a prime. Right? So, of course, um, in positive characteristic, perfectoid is the same thing as perfect, in which case all elements have unique um, pth roots, and so these systems already always exist. So, but in order to mimic a lot of the proofs and the techniques from positive characteristic, all right, you often then need to figure out how to take pth roots of particular elements, but, but in mixed characteristic, those things aren't unique. There are choices all the way ar um, across. Right? And it's not clear that, right, so in all the perfectoids I've written down before, I've given you a particular, often finite list of elements that have compatible p power roots, right? But, for instance, uh, in the earlier examples, if I, I look at x1 plus x2, it's not clear that that thing has compatible p power roots in mixed characteristic. Okay? So, right, this is the lemma that allows you to do that. All right, is everyone happy with the statement of the flatness lemma? All right, so, let me try to get through this. All right, so let's try and give a sketch of the proof of the existence of the Coleman Coley algebras. So, but for simplicity, right, and this case is just as pretty much the heart of the whole thing. So, let's say that K is algebraic closed, and we're in right. So, we're in mixed characteristic zero P, right. All right, so since I've assumed um, that my rings are all complete, all right, so let's write my ring R is a quotient, say S mod Q, right, where S is a, um, a power series ring over, over, a, over a wit ring, so So whatever it is, and um, here, of course, uh, P is not in Q, okay? All right, so let's let C be the height of Q, right? And standard prime avoidance arguments allow you to choose um, elements say F1 up to FC inside of Q so that P, F1, F2, dot, 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 up to FC are an S regular sequence, okay? And I can extend, right, to a full regular sequence of S by picking, um, extending P to a full system of parameters of S mod Q. All right, so um, extend to a full system of parameters on S. All right, so here, um, my, my numbering, right, so C was the co-dimension, D should be the dimension of S mod Q, right, namely R, right, so C plus D is the dimension of S, okay? 
Okay, so um, in particular, all right, so um, P x2 up to xd now are a system of parameters, right, for both s mod the f's and my original ring s mod q, right, so, and uh, I can pick You'll see this is where we're going to use Andre's flatness lemma. Right, so um, I've done it in such a way that Q is a minimal prime of the ideal F1 up to Fc. In particular, it's an associated prime. So there is an element G which is not in, um, in Q, or, or G not in, however way, what do I, yeah, right? So there is an element here of this quotient which is annihilated by Q, right? So there's an element G in here so that uh, the G times Q is contained in the ideal F1 up to Fc. Okay? So roughly speaking, um, the proof is gonna proceed in the following way, right? So the theory we've built up is going to make it pretty easy to come up with something which is big comma Cauley for this quotient here, where I've killed this fixed the f1 up to fc, right? The co-dimension number of elements, and then we have to do some tricks, right, in order to bootstrap off the existence here to go to s mod q. Okay, so. Um, set S infinity, right, to be whoops. Right, so Remember again, S was this uh, nice regular ring, right? So we have our standard trick to create a perfectoid ring out of that, namely uh, a join the infinite pth roots of P in all of the variables, right? Um, instead of this thing, and then P complete it, right? And as we've seen, this is perfectoid and faithfully flat over S, okay? But in this ring, right, for instance, if I were to take any of these elements, F1 up to Fc, or the element G, for example, it's not clear that um, those elements inside of S have infinite pth roots inside of here, all right? So by the flatness lemma, right, can find some faithfully flat mod p to the n map, all right, to some other perfectoid, right? Um, so that um, G, F1 up to Fc, have a compatible system of P power roots inside of S infinity prime. So apply the flatness on a, um, say, C plus one times, okay? You can check, right, and I'll leave this to you to do, that, um, well, since S infinity is P torsion free, right, um, and well, S infinity prime is P separated. This gives that S infinity prime is still P torsion free. 
All right, so this uses the flatness mod p to the n for all n. So if you go through and try and do the proof for yourself, all right, so more generally, there are statements you can make about um, uh, um, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, p complete flatness, right, which is a similar statement here. Okay. Um, great. And so in particular, um, I know that, well, P uh, F1 up to Fc and X2 up to Xd were a system of parameters for S. So in particular, there are an S regular sequence. All right. But now, S goes to S infinity is faithfully flat. S infinity to S infinity prime is faithfully flat mod P. So um, uh, it's easy to see then that, okay, when I, I don't have to worry about the um, uh, non-zero divisor P to start off with. I've already checked that separately. But once I kill P, right, faithfully flatness mod P means that these guys still remain a regular sequence in S infinity prime. Right, so, okay, so I, that shows that these guys, when I pass to S infinity prime, still say a regular sequence. But of course, when I have a regular sequence, right, uh, or some elements, then uh, asking that it's a regular sequence is the same as asking that any power of those elements remains a regular sequence. So I could take p to the eth roots for each of these uh, f's, and it would still be a regular sequence. Uh, that works for any e, and that's what I mean here by putting the infinity down on each of the steps. OK? All right? And so last point here, right? So this means that p x2 up to xd are, in fact, a regular sequence on, all right? So I'll, I'll, let me I'll write this off from another spot. Right, so um, p x to up to x d are going to be a regular sequence on, well, s infinity prime modulo right, this example we had before, where you look at this ring and kill the infinite p roots and then take the p completion. Now, I've used something a little slick here. Right? Um, uh, if you have two elements, A, B, that are regular sequence on a module, in general, I can't permute those. Right? However, it is always true that the first element is a regular element modulo the second. Right? So if A, B is regular, then A is a regular element modulo B. Right? So that allows me to take that P, which I know is regular on S infinity prime, and deduce that it still remains a regular element on the quotient over here. OK. All right, great. So and as we've said before, this guy here is, is perfectoid. And as we've set it up, if I were worried about s mod f1 up to fc, right? here I produced a big Comacaulay algebra for s mod f1 up to fc that is perfectoid, all right? So, or at least after I automatically complete, right? I have some regular sequence on uh, S mod F1 up to Fc that remains a regular sequence when I pass on this guy over here, okay? Or I have a 
a system of parameters for S mod the Fs, right, that becomes a regular sequence on T. All right? So the question is how then uh, can I transport this guy to give me something for Q? And we're going to use um, the following trick. So consider the map T to T prime, right, which um, has the following form. Right. Look at the set of homomorphisms over T from G1 over P to infinity, this ideal, back to T. Okay? And this is a little crazy, but check. That this is a commutative ring. Right, in general, right, you would expect this is just some T module, right, if you will, right? Um, not at all clear when I write Homs down that I can compose them, the let alone that they become, I can switch the order of how this thing all works, right? And the point here is this is really the first place in everything where I can't, I think I have to use almost mathematics in order to actually make the statements. The point here is that, well, this is a very special kind of ideal. Right? It's an ideal whose square is equal to itself. Right? And when you have such a guy, this is the framework for doing what's known as almost mathematics. Right? And so in particular, in this case, this map from t to t prime is is, well, g1 over p to the infinity, almost an isomorphism. Right, so meaning if I multiply by g1 over p to the e for any e, right, on either the kernel or the co-kernel, what I get vanishes. Okay. Um, so this ring you can think about in some sense as multiplying right t times g to the minus one over p to the infinity. All right, so sort of extracting some extra roots from this thing. All right, so once you've checked this, and this is fun to check, it's not, I would check this directly. Um, um, uh, what this means then is, well, P x to up to x d, there were a regular sequence on T, this is almost an isomorphism, so the end result is that these elements are almost still a regular sequence on T prime. Right, so they're, right, so meaning Right? What does it mean to be almost a regular sequence? Well, an almost non-zero divisor is one so that the um, kernel of multiplication by that element is almost zero, i.e. is killed by all powers uh, g1 over p to the e. Right? And once I have that, now I require that when I go modulo p, x2 is almost a non-zero divisor, so on and so forth. Okay? Right? And uh, also it has to be checked separately. Right, so that quotient, right, is not almost zero, right? I didn't just multiply and kill everything, okay? And? Well, our choice of G was such that GQ was contained in F1 up to FC. But now I'm in a situation where both G and all the Fs have roots, all right? So we can check that this, again, this is in some 
perspective multiplying by g to the minus 1 over p to the infinity. So the end result is that, well, if I have this relation and I pass up further, it's a summary which has roots here. Right, so, um, well, up to p completion, right, this will give me that g to 1 p to the infinity is contained in, in this after taking roots. All right, so the punchline is that I have this string of maps here, and this q which really lives inside of R, right, or really lives inside of S, right, after I map it all the way up to T prime, goes to zero. So T prime is an R algebra. So you can see that we're almost done, right? So now I've constructed you something, right? So, so this T prime here is perfectoid. It's an R algebra, and I have a system of parameters that doesn't become a regular sequence on T, but it almost is a regular sequence on T, right? And so the last trick is the following. Right, so we call this Gabber's trick, because he showed us all this in a note after a Hot Topic MSRI SL math workshop on the homological conjectures, uh, the handwritten note that's still posted on the site, okay? Um, all right, so now, all right, I have to, I want to take this almost regular sequence and force it to be a regular sequence, right? So here's the trick. Let B be a localization of a countable infinite product of copies of T, okay? Um, and the localization is the multiplicative set generated by this, um, the roots of G where this is giving us our, our almost mathematic system. Right? And at this point, we can check, right? So one, P x2 up to xd were a g almost regular sequence before, and the point of this trick is that it takes things that are almost true, right, and forces them to be true on the nose, right? So in fact, these guys are an honest regular sequence now on b. And two, right, it's still um, proper, right? So I, I didn't kill, kill everything. Right? All right, so this is now, right, well, it's a BCM R algebra with respect to this fixed system of parameters, so I can get an honest BCM or balanced big, CCM, big, big ECM BCM R algebra by P completing or by uh, M completing, right? So, what? Where? T prime, thank you. All right. All right, so B hat M, 
will be a BCM R algebra. Right? And that completes the, the sketch. Okay, so um, let me do a couple of remarks. Right, so, so at this point, we know BCM R algebras exist, right? So if I give you some collection of them, right, then Mon Schwed showed that you can find Uh, perfectoid BCM R algebra uh, B, all right, dominating all of them. All right. Um, moreover, this can be done compatibly. Um, with the direct limit of the B lambdas, assuming that was a directed system to begin with, right? So as a consequence, right? It's exactly this compatibility with directed systems that allows you to to create a BCM R plus algebra in a, in a uh, systemic way, right? So say for each finite extension of R, right, I can find a BCM algebra, right? And uh, the finite extensions of R give me a directed system and I can now find something dominating all of those, right? So these are the kinds of extensions you have to do once you even know existence in order to keep going further, right? All right, so, um, Again, these lectures build off of, in some way, some of the talks from last summer, right? So in particular, there was a lecture series by Polstra on some of the applications of the existence of big Macaulay algebras, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say at least one of them. namely the direct sum end theorem, all right? So here, this is the statement that if RMK is regular local, right, then R is a splinter ring, i.e., whenever I have a module finite domain extension, It's a splitting, okay? So splinters are a little enigmatic in general, right? So in equal characteristic zero, i.e. if you have a ring that contains Q, Splinters are the same thing as being normal, because I can use the trace map to, to split off of a finite extensions, right? In positive characteristic or mixed characteristic, that's no longer true, right? So, um, uh, and in general, often some very easy properties of splinters are not so easy to check, right? So for instance, um, uh, it was shown by myself on Rankea Dada that uh, if you take a local ring, right, that it's a splinter, if and only if its completion is a splinter, assuming the ring has um, uh, geometrically regular formal fibers, right, so, but that in general, the statement fails. 
Okay? So, um, but let's finish with the proof of the corollary. So it's pretty easy to reduce to the case. Right? So while it's not true that R is a splinter if and only if it, uh, its M at a completion is, if the M at a completion is a splinter, then the original ring must be. Right? So it's pretty easy to, easy to reduce to the case where R is complete. And say I have a module finite extension. Right, which is com uh, my ring R was complete local. So since R is a, or since S is a domain extension, right, it also remains local, right. So if I take a system of parameters, It's a system of parameters for R, but also for S, all right, since the map is local. Okay. Now, take S to B, uh, BCM S algebra. Okay. All right, so. In here, we've got R mapping to S, maps all the way to B, right? So this map here uh, is automatically faithfully flat, right? So again, remember, R here was, was regular. So let's say that this was a regular system of parameters for R. That system of parameters is a system of parameters for S. And then also is, remains a regular sequence on B since B was big comma Cauli. So as a result, if I look at, say, the ith causal homology of the x's on B, right, this vanishes for. Right, for i less than the dimension, right, because uh, the x's are a regular sequence on b, but of course that's the same thing since the, I can take the causal resolution of the residue field k to get a resolution for r. Right? Right, so, and now I use the fact. That um, whenever I have a faithfully flat map, or even pure, right, map from something which is a complete local ring, then that thing splits. Right? So, say take the splitting map phi, and then of course what I can do is take that splitting and restrict it to S to get a splitting for S. Okay? All right, so there's my sketch of the proof of, of the theorem. All right, so um, maybe we'll stop the lecture there. And let me tell you, uh, so at this point now, I have access to the big Como Cauli algebras. So in the last lecture, I will tell you as much as I can, as quickly as I can, about how to use the existence of these big Como Cauli algebras to um, define some classes of singularities that mimic um, many of the classes that we've been talking about in the other lecture series. All right. So. Hi, Craig. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hi. It's good to see you.